Hi, I'm Johnny Greco. I'm an undergraduate at The Ohio State University, and in this coffee brief, I'll be talking about my recent paper with Paul Martini and Todd Thompson, in which we present a K-band spectroscopic study of the mass and stellar population distribution in the famous starburst galaxy M82. Observations suggest that star formation in galaxies is regulated by feedback processes. In rapidly star-forming galaxies, feedback operates on large scales, driving galaxy-wide superwinds, which can eject the raw materials for future stellar generations if the interstellar material is launched with enough momentum to escape the host galaxy's gravitational potential. The exceptionally high star formation rates present in starburst galaxies makes them optimal targets to probe feedback processes. M82 is one of the closest starburst galaxies to the Milky Way, and its nearly edge-on geometry makes it an excellent laboratory for studying the physics of galactic winds and star formation. In order to understand the dynamics of the ejected gas and constrain the physics of feedback processes in M82, it is essential to accurately measure the total dynamical mass on both the small and large scales. We obtained K-band spectra of M82 with the Lucy 1 spectrograph and the Large Binocular Telescope. The setup of our observation is shown in Figure 1 of our paper. This is a digital sky survey image of M82 with overlays of our two slit positions, which we designate as M82E and M82W. Each slit is approximately 4 arc minutes in length, and they overlap on the center of the galaxy. The widths of the slits have been increased by a factor of 6 for ease of visibility in this figure. We use the CO stellar absorption bandhead at 2.29 microns, which originates in the atmospheres of cool, evolved stars, to measure the rotation curve, and figure 3 in our paper shows our results. In contrast with the nearly Keplerian gas dynamics suggested by previous measurements of H1 and CO emission from the ISM, which imply a truncation in M82's dark matter halo, our data show that the rotation curve is in fact flat on 1 to 4 kiloparsec scales. A few interesting features in our rotation curve are the bar region, which can be seen as the symmetric sharp features on either side of the nucleus, and the apparent velocity reversal at 1 kiloparsec on both sides of the galaxy, which may be due to the presence of symmetric spiral arms. The horizontal air bars in this figure indicate the aperture size of the measurement, and the vertical air bars represent the uncertainty of the velocity measurement. Figure 5 of our paper shows the mass profile based on our stellar kinematic measurements. We assume circular motion to calculate the enclosed mass at each point. While non-circular motions are expected in the central region, and in particular the bar region, circular motion is a good assumption at large scales. We estimate M82's total dynamical mass is approximately 10 to the 10 solar masses. The superwind is likely launched from the region inside the dashed line, where we estimate the mass is less than 2 times 10 to the 9 solar masses. Finally, in figure 6 of our paper, we show the equivalent width of the CO bandhead at 2.29 microns as a function of radius. The data clearly show a significant increase in the equivalent width within 500 parsec radius, which is the region inside the dashed lines. These results suggest that red supergiants dominate the near-infrared continuum throughout the starburst core. If you're interested in learning more about our results and the details of our study, I encourage you to read our paper, which was posted on AstroPH Today. Thanks for listening.